Come in. Welcome. I need G. Marshall, pilot of this shadowy craft which wends its mysterious way through the uncharted depths of your very own imagination. They were giants, those founding fathers of ours. Not only were they superb statesmen and soldiers, they were men of many spectacular achievements. In these modern times, when so many of us are confined to our own particular calling, it's hard to conceive of men who could turn a talented hand to anything that needed doing. Consider Benjamin Franklin now. He was a writer, a publisher, a philosopher, a diplomat, an inventor, a scientist, and according to the French, who should know something about it, he was a formidable lover. So, you shouldn't be too surprised to discover that Ben Franklin was also a detective. Our mystery drama, The Benjamin Franklin Murder Case, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The year is 1750, and things are relatively quiet in the American colonies. So far, no one is seriously advocating rebellion. And even so, Sarah Clemens would pay no heed to talk of rebellion. Sarah Clemens is a young lady who has troubles enough of her own. We are in the city of Philadelphia. We say city because we know Philadelphia as a city. But back in 1750, the only settled place in all of North America that could legitimately claim to be a city would be Mexico City. Well, getting back to Sarah Clemens and her problems, the most pressing one is concerned with, don't laugh, ghosts. Young woman. Please, sir. I say, young woman, I cannot call you a young lady. You will come to a bad end. Sir. But me no sirs. Oh, you are a cool one, a sly one. But those innocent-looking eyes don't take in English Edward Chiva. No, they don't. Sir, what are you talking about? Uh Aha. You stand there bold as brass, cool as ice, and you say, what am I talking about? Young woman, you belong in the theater. You do. You not only have the talent, but you've got the morals of an actress. Sir, I will not permit you to insult me in my own parlor. You almost told me this house... Almost? I thought we had an agreement. I'm breaking that agreement. But, but, but why? No, no, stop it. Stop blinking them innocent eyes and asking why. But I am asking. Why? Because the Clemens house is a haunted house. Did I hear you correctly? The Clemens house is a haunted house. That's what everyone in town is saying. Oh, but tell them loafers. Ah, so you do admit people are talking about people it. People drunk or died with vagrants. <laughs> Any time a house stands empty, the ridiculous rumors. What, what, the Clemens House is the finest dwelling in the province of Pennsylvania. Then why don't you live there? Why do you want to sell it? Oh, Mr. Chiver, I've already discussed this entire matter. I cannot afford to maintain so large a place. You can't. Why can't you? I don't need all those rooms. It requires help, and I can't afford servants. You could buy slaves. Mr. Chiver. Mr. Chiver, what? It would violate every one of my moral, ethical, and religious principles. To own the body and soul of another human being. Huh. Beggars can't be choosers. Tell me, sir. What affair is it of yours? You say you can't afford servants and you won't have slaves. Hmm. But you could afford servants if you were to turn the place into a tavern. Never. It's a good, respectable trade. And you're pretty enough, wench, to attract the business. Sir, this impertinent... If you do not wish to purchase the property, I'm sure there are plenty of others. How long have you been trying to sell the house? Oh, uh, if it's uh, such a bargain, how come it ain't been snapped up? Because... No, ma'am, it won't do. The house is haunted. Very well, sir. Have it your way. Uh-huh. Then you admit it. I admit only this, Mr. Chiver. I was wrong about you. When you first inquired about the house, I said to myself, here is a man of judgment. <laughs> here is a shrewd and sensible man of the world. Here is probably the keenest man of business in the entire province of Maryland. Delaware. As you will. But what do I discover on closer examination? A timid, irresolute waverer. You are losing the opportunity of a lifetime to buy a haunted house. How can the house be haunted? <laughs> haunted by, by what? Ghosts. <laughs> you, a hard-headed, practical, no-nonsense gentleman of affairs, a member of your provincial house of delegates. <laughs> you believe in ghosts? Well, it'll be kind enough to 
Leave the premises at once. Sir, you are a fraud. Now, Miss Clemens. Oh, yes, I won't. There may be rumors spread by stupid gossipers that the Clemens house is haunted. And this is laid by a scarce and reduced surprise. But shouldn't you, as a shrewd trader, profit from my distress? Now, Miss, you have no right I to accuse me. Go on, take unfair advantage of me. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll think about it. Uh, uh, good morning. Oh, good morning, Richard. I, uh, I, I knocked, but no one heard me yet. Oh, uh, Mr. Triver and I are conducting some business. Yeah, so I, I just walked Mr. in. Mr. Triver, may I present my cousin, Mr. Richard Laporte? Your servant, sir. Howdy. Uh, Richard? Mr. Triver is going to buy the Clemens house. Well, now he I never... to make a tavern of it. No, see here, I didn't a say this. Tavern. And why not? Well, well, that would be it. Would be the sacrilege. Why, Mr. William Penn himself slept in the blue bedroom. Oh, when... come, Richard. You and I spoke about this many times, and I thought I'd settled it. But a tavern. Well, of course. Shouldn't the common folk also have a beautiful place? I didn't even say I'm going to buy, much less make a tavern. Oh, of course you will, Mr. Triver. My dear. Sarah, a no, Richard, I thought you shared my belief that no person should own a house that exceeds his needs for shelter. When we marry, this place which my mother left me will suffice for us. Just hold on while I ask this young fellow here a question. Uh, Mr. Um, La- Laporte. Uh, Laporte, La- I want you to look me square in the eye and say yes or no. Is the old Clemens house haunted? Yes. Well, Miss Clemens, see? <laughs> Richard is an incurable romantic. You say the house is haunted, young fella? Yes, yes, it, it is haunted. It's haunted by demons of the past. Oh, nonsense, Richard. Haunted by memories, haunted by... Haunted by the ghost of Clemens as long dead. Well, all I can say to you, Miss Clemens, is good day. Wait, what for? Here, this young man, uh, your own intended, admits a uh, uh, confession. Oh, it's nonsense. And uh, uh, he ain't no tavern vagabond neither, as far as I can tell. But say. there are no ghosts. That ain't what Mr. Laporte is saying. Of course, there are ghosts. That's because the past never dies. Miss Clemens, how can you say there are no ghosts when this man, who is to become your lord and master... Oh, no, uh, no. <laughs> that is not the relationship we envisage, is it, Richard? Oh, no, each of us will have an equal voice. Son, you're asking for more trouble than you can handle. Uh, but don't get me off the subject. What is the subject, uh, sir? Ghosts. Mr. Laporte says there are ghosts in that house. Richard is only using a figure of speech. He doesn't mean there are actual ghosts. But I do. And I say good day to you both. Mr. Driver. He's right, my dear. Oh, Richard. You sounded so medieval. The ghosts of the Clemenses? You believe in them, too. And that's why you want to sell the house. You're ashamed of them. What are you trying to say? You are ashamed of the fact that the first William Clemens was a pirate and slaver. It's just malicious rumor. Oh, no, my dear, it's an unfortunate fact. The family fortune was founded on blood. You were a child growing up in that house. You knew it. You were ashamed. Richard, I shall become extremely angry. I was a child, too. The poor relation invited to play. And my eyes were open. I saw everything. Please, Richard. Both talked about it constantly. Death. Murder. How frightened we were. The old man. The, the ghost of the old man. The murderer, the pirate. Richard, those were childhood fancies, nothing more. Nothing more. Ghosts do not, cannot exist. What was that question again, sir? What what I asked, Mr. Franklin, was, uh, do you believe in ghosts? Of course, Mr. Chiver. You... You? Uh, Certainly, sir. All of us are ghosts. Inside each of us are the ghosts of dead ideas. You know the old Clemens house? Yes, I do. Now, the girl wants to sell. I can buy a cheap, a bargain. (laughs) Do you need advice to take advantage of a bargain? It might not be a bargain. Uh Uh-huh. If it's haunted. Oh. Can a house be haunted? Mr. Chiver, I cannot give you that answer, but I can suggest how you might find one. Now you're talking. Go up to the house. Hmm. When you want to learn something, investigate for yourself. Well, you don't have to be smart to think of that. But the fact is, you didn't think of it. Oh, what I have suggested is something new among natural philosophers. It is called the scientific method. But that's nothing but old-fashioned horse sense. Exactly, Mr. Chiver. Exactly. That's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going up there and see for myself. <laughs> Mr. Benjamin Franklin of Philadelphia will find plenty of things to make him angry. The arrogance of the British, the short-sightedness of his fellow Americans, the stubbornness of the French, and the haughtiness of the Spanish. But right now, he is as furious as he will ever be. A man named Chiver solicited his advice, followed it, and was killed, or at least is dead, because he did so. So right now, on this late summer morning in the autumn of 1750... We find our Mr. Franklin in a rare mood indeed. I only want you to tell me, Doctor. Was he murdered? Uh, yes, well, that doesn't answer the question. Well, uh, he has some redness about the throat. Well, was he strangled? He might have been. But I see no finger mark. Well, could the killer have worn gloves? Could the killer have worn gloves? We have yet to ascertain whether or not there was a killer. Therefore... The question cannot be answered in the form that it was couched. If he wasn't strangled, what was the cause of death? Uh, he also has a bruise on his head. Uh -huh. Was he struck? He may have been. On the other hand, he may have hit his head against some sharp object when he fell to the floor. Dr. Benson, do you ever commit yourself? He may have died of fright. Fright? Yeah. I have never seen such Error on the face of a corpse. Well, can a man die of fright? Uh, some doctors say yes. Some say no. May I ask your interest in the case, Mr. Franklin? Well, the dead gentleman and I have a mutual friend. Therefore, I am collecting his effects and sending them down to his home in Wilmington. Oh, uh, you you may want this along with his other possessions, Mr. Franklin. Uh, what is it? Uh, it seems to be a gold button of some kind. Yeah. Where did you find it? It was clutched in his hand. <laughs> Actually, he was holding it so tightly I had to pry his fingers apart. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Oh, is it significant? A button. Well, you can see it's been torn from a coat. Probably he was struggling with his assailant and in the fight... Now, now, that is if there was an assailant. Doctor, 
In every man's life, there comes a time when finally he must commit himself. That may be true. On the other hand... Hey, thank you, Doctor. Now, Sarah, I want you to look at this button. How could that poor man have died in the house? Obviously, the murderous ghost The button, Captain... Sarah. Richard, look. Do you recognize it? It's the kind of button that old Captain William Clemens wore. William Clemens, who built this house? This gold button with a star in the anchor. It was on all his uniform. Well, then it was the ghost of William Clemens. <sighs> no. What do you say to that, Mr. Frank? I say we have a problem. Assume it was a ghost. Hmm. Is a ghost substantial? Oh, how can a ghost be substantial? Well, if he were substantial, he couldn't be a ghost. Then why would his clothes be substantial? No, Mr. Chivers was engaged in combat, mortal combat. With whom? Well, I say a man followed Mr. Chiver to the house or waited for him there and killed him. I say a man because it's hard to conceive of a woman strong enough. Mr. Franklin, it was Captain Clemens' ghost. The button proves it. Not conclusively. Captain Clemens wasn't a pirate. Oh, thank you, Mr. Franklin. Uh, that is, not a pirate in name. He was a privateer. He had the Queen's permission to prey upon French, Spanish, and Dutch merchant ships. He fancied himself a naval officer. His men wore uniforms. Uh, the higher ranks all had buttons, just like that one. As a matter of fact, I know another man in this town who once wore a navy coat. I remember this button. I was just a youngster, but I do remember this button. <laughs> if it ain't Mr. Franklin. Good day, Abner. So what do I owe the honor? I've come here to see if I can arrange to have you hang. Oh? What did I do? <laughs> what did you do? What haven't you done, you scoundrel? You sold whiskey and guns to the Indians. You bought stolen merchandise from pirates. Ah, but none of it proved. Ah, but all of it proved. The commandment warns us against the bearing of false witness. Here we have the devil quoting scripture. Why not? The devil can read. Now, how do you hope to hang me? For the murder of Amos Chiver. You mean the poor fellow from Wilmington? Yes, Abner, the poor fellow from Wilmington. Oh, hadn't you heard? He was killed by a ghost. Everyone knows that Clement's house is haunted. No, no, he wasn't killed by a ghost. No, no, no. Who did it? I think you did it, Abner. <laughs> Why would I want to kill a man I didn't even know him? And you didn't want to get to know him either. You're a hard man to follow, Mr. Franklin. <laughs> but I know you always wind up someplace, so I'll listen. Thank you. You don't like competition, Abner. You've been known to run people who threatened your business out of town. Well, that's one way to look at it. Another way would be to say I showed them where opportunities were greater or elsewhere. Amos Chiver was going to buy the Clements place just up the street from here and turn it into a tavern. And for that, I killed him? You took advantage of Clements' house reputation, hid there in your old navy coat, and tried to scare him. I did? But I suppose he didn't scare. There was a fight. You killed him. You write good stories in your paper, Mr. Franklin, but if you write this one, you've got to prove it. I've got the proof right here. This button. What, what, what button? You wore this button when you served with Captain Clemens as a privateer. Well, how did you... Uh, where, where did you get that button? Try to guess where this button was found. Well, you're a man of lively imagination. Think. Where did you get that button? This button, Abner, was found clutched in the dead man's hand. Yeah, but it, 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 it can't be. It was. Uh, I haven't worn that coat. I, I haven't even seen that coat. It, it, it's more than 30 years. Ah, here comes the constable. Uh, what have you there, Mr. Partridge? I've been to the back of this house like you said, Mr. Franklin. Uh -huh. You had no right to search my the house. Constable obtained a warrant. And here's the coat. Yes, indeed. Your old blue naval officer's coat. Some of them buttons are missing, Mr. Franklin. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are still on here are just like the one you got in your hand. I tell you, I was I was here all last night. I didn't set foot out of this tavern. What constable? You were here yourself. So I was. Till ten o'clock. And after ten o'clock, who can vouch for you, Abner? Well, I was with a... <clears throat> yes? Well, I, I spent the rest of the night with a lady. Who? Oh. Well, being a gentleman, how can I possibly... You're a man of the world, Mr. Franklin. You appreciate my position. Well, it is a gentleman's duty to die before permitting a lady's name to be sullied. Or so I've been led to understand. Well, I'm not going to die for nobody. I was with... Uh, 
Oh, hang it, Mr. Franklin. Yes, indeed, Abner. Hanging seems to be the order of the day. I'm a married man. What's my wife going to say? Chivalry is dead, Abner. All right. I was with Charity Townsend. Charity Townsend, aptly named. I doubt we have a lady in town more generous with her favors. Abner, who's going to take the word of Charity Townsend? Yeah, but it's true. You can ask her. You, you can't... Oh, my Lord, what's my wife going to say? You'll have to come along with me, Abner. Uh, Mr. Franklin, can I have that button to go with this coat as evidence? Now, Charity, are you telling the truth? Oh, yes, Mr. Franklin. I can't lie. I mean, that's the source of my problems. I just can't lie. You were with Abner all of last night. Well... I could lie, you see, and save my reputation. But my dear old dad, he's in heaven right now. He said to me, girl, never tell a lie. And you know why? Folks aren't going to believe you anyhow, so you might as well be hanged for telling the truth. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, about, uh, about Abner. Oh, I was um, feeling a bit poorly last evening, so I thought a glass of wine might suit me. And after having a few, Abner says to me, Charity, you want to come to the back of the house? What for, I asks. And he says, I got some trophies I took when I was serving in the Navy. That's true. Well, I have a weakness for sailors' trophies, so I says, all right. But what's your wife going to say to my coming to a private room? And he says, never fear. She'll be none the wiser. She's visiting her sister across the river in Camden Town. So uh, <laughs> you went with him? Oh, but I'm telling you, everything was proper. We just sat and talked. Oh, he tells such stories. And before I knew it, the sun had come up. <laughs> a most unusual evening. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so you claim you were with Abner all of last night. Well, I wish I could lie, but you see, I can't. Not even to save my reputation. Yes, sir, Mr. Franklin. Judge Herkimer spoke with me an hour ago. He wants to hold the trial tomorrow. Uh, Constable, may I see that coat and uh, that button again? Sure. I got him right here on the table. Look at them all you like. Oh, thank you. It's plain as day. That's the exact same button as the mother's on that coat. And there's three of them missing. This could be any one of them. Judge Herkimer says we might just as well prepare the scaffold now. Uh, before the trial? Well, you know the judge, Mr. Franklin. He figures if a man ain't guilty, he wouldn't be in the prisoner's box in the first place. Yes, and uh, Charity's testimony? Now, Mr. Franklin, you know what that's worth. Hmm. Do you suppose I might see Abner? Can't imagine why, but you're welcome. And uh, let me hold on to this coat and button for just a moment. Well, Mr. Franklin, I guess you were right. You said you'd arrange to have me hung, and you've done it. You think so? You know, in my lifetime, I've done a hundred things that called for hanging, but I always cheated the rope. And now I'm about to swing for something I never done. I know. I can even prove it. Me. You can. Abner, I have a problem. A most serious moral and religious now, problem. Now, now, look here, Mr. Franklin. If you know I'm in it... Let us but... say you are innocent in particular, but guilty in general. Yeah, but if you know I didn't kill Chiva, why let me swing for it? I must search my conscience. Examine my soul, as it were. You are an engaging but a thoroughgoing scoundrel. You are responsible in one way or another for the death of hundreds of people. Well, scores would be more truthful. Yes. Even now, some poor farmer on the fringes of the Ohio Territory could be murdered by an Indian using a musket that was purchased from you. Well, that can't be proved. Justice must be served. Yeah, but that ain't justice. Well, if it's just for you to go free when you're guilty, why is it unjust for you to hang when you're innocent? Now, come, Abner, you can't have it both ways. Well, Mr. Franklin, please, think the commandments. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not bear false witness. Oh, it's out of my hands, Abner. At this moment, within my soul, a battle is being fought for your life and freedom. Both sides are marshalling potent and convincing arguments. Shall you live? Shall you die? I must wait for the answer to be revealed to me. And there he is. Abner, the old pirate. The old smuggler. Ironically, he faces the rope for a crime he didn't commit according to Ben Franklin. But what sort of game is Ben playing? Perhaps his own words might answer the question. No, I am not amused by games of chance or even skill, for the most fascinating game of all is the game of life. The game continues when I return shortly with Act Three.
retribution. Sooner or later, it overtakes us all. If not for the wrongs we have actually done, then perhaps for the wrong another has committed in our name. But one way or another, we pay the bill. Then Franklin can prove that Abner didn't kill Amos Chimer. But why bother? Abner has killed enough people during his lifetime. It isn't as if the noose were being drawn around the neck of an innocent man. You say you can prove I'm innocent, Ben? How? Well, Charity claims you were with her all evening. Charity? Well, who'd believe a woman like her? Who? Tell me, Abner, if you were sitting on the jury, would you believe Charity? Well, not if she swore on every Bible in Pennsylvania. Interesting. And yet, in this case, you know she's telling the truth. Well, but why do you say she's telling the truth? Why should she lie? What does she gain by it? Well, I, I could have paid her. Yes, but you didn't. Because I know you didn't kill Chiver. Well, how? How do you know? Uh, first, I have a little agreement here for you to sign. Uh, here, uh, read it. I, Abner Merritt, do hereby agree to give to the Reverend Peter Quincy the sum of 350 pounds. But what for? The Reverend Quincy is the pastor in the village of Olmstead, which was destroyed in an Indian raid last week. The money will be used for rebuilding homes. But you supplied not... the Indians with weapons and the powder. Oh, but I didn't. And I... Not directly, perhaps, but you did sell the muskets to unscrupulous traders. Uh, read on. The sum of 500 pounds to Mr. Henry Hewitt, director of the Children's Orphanage. Well, I ain't got that much money. Raise it. Oh, but read I... Read on. You'll make a poor man out of me. Poor, but happy. Poor in wealth and worldly goods, perhaps, but rich in the love of your fellow man. Ah, no, I'll sign no such papers. All right, then hang. This, this is blackmail, you know. Perhaps. Well, how do I know you... How do I know you'll keep your bargain? How do I know you can prove that I'm innocent? Now, that is an interesting speculation. But we waste each other's time. I have in my bag here a pen and a bottle of ink. May I please have your signature? Oh, this is robbery. It's worse than piracy on the high seas. <laughs> and you should know. All, all, all right. <clears throat> Where do I sign it? On the bottom. Uh-huh. Blended, that's it. See, you now have an opportunity to create a new reputation for yourself. Till now, you have been reviled as a scoundrel. In the future, you shall be admired as a saint. Fortunate Abner. Yeah, but the proof... The, the, the proof you promised. Ah, to... yes, the proof. Uh, Mr. Partridge? Mr. Partridge? What's up? Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to release Abner. Release? Why? Ain't he guilty? No, sir. Uh, please, uh, come in here, sir. And uh, leave the cell door open, Constable. Uh, Abner will be leaving. But the button and the coat... Uh, precisely. They prove his innocence. But any fool can see that button is exactly the same as the buttons that are on that coat. You have to admit that. I do. Then what it do you It is do? exactly the same kind of button, but it was not fastened to that coat. And if it was not fastened to that coat, it could not have been pulled off that coat. But you can see that it's the button really that... look at what's to be seen. What color is the coat? Oh, any fool can see it's blue. Now... Since the button was obviously pulled away or torn away during a struggle, there is a small shred of material clinging to it. What color is this material? Well, well I... Why, it... it's red. <sighs> Captain's red. While Abner's coat is lieutenant's blue. I, I should have seen it myself. I could have saved a fortune. What's he saying, Mr. Franklin? Uh, the poor man's so happy to be vindicated, he's delirious with joy. But if Abner didn't kill Mr. Chiver, who did? It should be obvious to everybody. The ghost. The ghost of Captain Clemens. Uh, but, Mr. Franklin, isn't that impossible? We should never we... try to define the impossible, my dear. We searched the house thoroughly. And, and we, we found absolutely nothing? Mm, you recognize the button as belonging to Captain Clemens as being part of his uniform. This means you were familiar with that uniform. Oh, yes, sir. His uniform, his hat, his sword. They were all left hanging in his room, just as when he was alive. I remember we children used to spend hours up there. So why didn't we... we find the uniform coat just before, when we searched the house? Because the ghost is wearing it. Oh, really, Richard? Well, oh. Richard's opinion is as good as anyone. You mean you actually believe that a ghost could be oh, up there? Oh, yes. And now our problem is to find out who the ghost is. Oh, how can we do that? It'll be easy to recognize. Mr. Franklin, am I hearing you correctly? We shall recognize the ghost because, you see, he is branded. 
How can a ghost... He has committed murder, this ghost, and therefore he carries the murderer's mark. What mark? All murderers carry a mark. A mark which clearly proclaims them as killers. But but I've seen murderers. I haven't seen any identifying... It's the brand of Cain. Sometimes it's visible on Earth. Sometimes not. Mr. Franklin, are you feeling quite all right? Never better. Well, we must clear the place of its ghostly reputation, or else you shall never sell it. I think I'll go there myself this evening. But that ghost, it's a murderer. (laughs) Listen to me. I talk as if I believe it. Well, why don't you believe it? The ghost has already committed murder. I suppose I'll have to take my chance. But you mustn't go alone. Richard, you No, 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 no purpose in my going. What shall I discover? That there's a ghost? I already believe it. Well, somebody should go with Mr. Franklin. Oh, no. When a man goes seeking a wife or searching for a ghost, he travels faster when he travels alone. No one is to mention the fact that I'm to visit the Clemens house this evening. Yes, sir. Oh, we three shall keep the secret. Well, you know the saying. Three can keep a secret if two are dead. Why can't we walk in the front door, Mr. Franklin? Keep your voice low, Abner. Now, slide the window up. Up. That's it. Let's climb inside. Why are we going in like thieves? Because I am hoping the ghost will enter by the front door. Listen. I don't hear nothing. To the front room. Hurry. Shine that lantern. Nobody here, Mr. Franklin. Uh Uh-oh. Listen. Listen. Where's it coming from? Hey, hey. That don't sound like a human voice. Hey, sit. Clemens, the old man himself. It's the captain, the ghost of the captain. Well, where is it coming from? It's, Abner? it's the captain. It's coming from the fireplace. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's the captain. That's how he talks. I'm getting out of here. No, no, wait. It's the captain. He said death couldn't keep him away. He'd come back. That's what he said. Where is that voice coming from? It ain't human. It's coming from everywhere. I don't know about you, but I'm going. You're right, Abner. It is time we were leaving. I'll never sell the house now. It's all over town. I've just been telling everyone how the ghosts are all over the place. (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Sarah, Mr. Franklin was only trying to help. Besides, what could he do? After all, how can a human being fight a ghost? Now, sir, do you believe the ghost of Captain Clemens haunts the house? Uh, Richard, why do you object to Sarah's selling the Clemens house? Well, I... uh, It's just that it's haunted. It isn't because you wanted to own it yourself one day? Well, how could I ever own it? You will at least share in the ownership when you marry Sarah. Well, why would I want to own it? Mr. Frank and Richard was always unhappy there. I know. That's why he wishes to own it. Richard was the poor, despised cousin who was patronized by the Clemenses. That's true, isn't it? They... they were very kind to me. The bread of charity is bitter when it is offered by the hand of arrogance. And so you dreamed, didn't you, of one day walking through that house, not as a petitioner, but as a master. Yes. Yes, it's human to feel that way. Yes, Richard. Uh, why are you wearing a glove? Uh, I have an infection from a poisonous plant. Mm. So, you have discouraged Sarah from selling. But, but he never said to me, don't sell. He didn't have to. He spread the rumors that the house is haunted. Well, everyone in Philadelphia knows... You are the one, Richard, who keeps making sure that the reputation for the house being haunted is kept fresh and Sir, green. I cannot permit you to insult my fiancé. I thought you were my friend, Mr. Franklin. I am, Richard. And I am no fair-weather friend either. I shall stand by you as a friend, even though you are to be tried for murder. Murder? Mr. Franklin! Ask him, Sarah, ask him. I deny it. How can you deny it? How can you deny the brand of Cain? I... You uh... killed Amos Chiver because he must have recognized you, and you knew I was going to be at the house last Richard, night. Richard, he couldn't tell anybody. He's so timid. You wanted he... to scare me, too. And your voice. Oh, it sounded ghostly, and it seemed to come from everywhere. Probably because there are secret passages in that house. We're accusing Richard of murder. And as a child, you discovered those passages. Yes, it was well done. And you know where the red coat is. And shall it show a missing button? But you can't prove that Richard did it. Richard, I defy you to take that glove off your hand and show us the mark of Cain that covers your palm. Richard? (gasps) Yes. Yes, 
It, it's the muck of cane. Here, look. Look, I, I'm branded. That great black mark. It, it won't wash off. It, it won't rub off. I'm marked. Oh, Richard. No, no. No, don't, don't, don't come near me, Sarah. I, I'm unworthy. Oh, why, Richard? Why? <laughs> he knows why. He knows why. With the bitter bread of charity. Oh, no, 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 don't weep for me. I'm unworthy. I wear the mark of Cain. I'm sorry, Richard. I will now walk down to the jail and hand myself over to Constable Partridge. Let me come with you. No, no, no. I must be alone. From now on, I have the mark. Yes. The mark. Not exactly. Not exactly? <laughs> Sir, now what? Well, if we assume that there cannot be ghosts, we must assume that someone human was playing the part. Logical? Yes. That someone human would have to get into the house in order to scare visitors. Only three of us knew I would be going there last night. You and I and Richard. Yes? Earlier in the evening, I smeared the doorknob with some nitrate of silver. Nitrate of silver? Yes, it is used in making mirrors. And when it touches the skin, it turns black, and it cannot be washed off or removed in any way until new skin grows. That's black magic. No, that's natural science. And our poor Richard entered the house through the front door, turned the knob, and thus his hand acquired the mark of Cain. The mark of Cain. It exists on every murderer. The problem is to make it visible. For that, however, you need men of perception. Men like Benjamin Franklin. Well, poor Richard didn't hang. He went quite mad and spent the rest of his life in an asylum. Sarah went on to marry a very timid man and kept him under her thumb. And Franklin, as you well know, went on to become a founding father of this great country. And I shall be back in just a few moments. Chemist, psychologist, detective, before these professions were even born, Benjamin Franklin exhibited a judgment and a depth of vision that is hardly equaled today. Yes, they were giants, those men who founded the country, and what they left us is not just a legacy, but a challenge to live as they did. Fearless, curious, and independent. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Marion Seldes, Stotch Cotsworth, Russell Horton, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Tonight's WR Mystery Theater is brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program is furnished by the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is WOR New York and RKO General Station.